Okay, so this is one of those videos where I may be covering some ground that I've covered before. But firstly, a uh, quick thing I should say, um, I haven't had time to say it in the other videos because I only made this change last night, but I've changed my username. So long-term subscribers will have noticed that. The reason I've done so is simply because I feel more comfortable using an abstract name rather than my own name on cyberspace um yeah that's basically the reason. so uh but you know i'm obviously not a troll and it's not fake account or anything like that because i'm still showing my face and i still um who i am um and actually it's partly to do with that new username that I, i'm making this video i'm using the name centrist philosopher um, it's just kind of a fun name. It's people shouldn't be too much into it, but centrist is because I'm a centrist. Uh, by American standards, by in American terminology, I call myself a moderate. Um, and really, in this video, I just want to outline why. I also want to make a point, and this has just come to me. Um, I would be a liar if I said that I don't care what people think of me. I cannot honestly say that I don't care. I do care what people I respect think of me. Now, that doesn't mean that I pander my life to please others. Definitely, definitely not. But I, 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 I simply wouldn't be honest if I said I simply did not care what people think of me. I do, to an extent. Um, the thing about me is I... I'm not politically correct, so I say what's on my mind. But at the same time, I try not to be so sort of crude and um, blowhard about things that I would polarise people. Although admittedly, some of my videos are quite strongly worded. I am very opinionated. There's no escaping that. But I would like to think I'm not an opinionated in an arrogant way. So I make these videos, I discuss my views, I sometimes debate with people. I sometimes come out with quite strong views. Um, hopefully more often than not, they're more, if not neutral, at least diplomatic. But in the real world, believe it or not, I don't actually like confrontation. You know, I, I wouldn't voluntarily go up to someone who I know has a different view from me and say, oh, let's debate this subject. I wouldn't get any enjoyment from that and I wouldn't really see much point. So sometimes... You have to just agree to disagree. And, you know, we have this thing in Western countries, democracies, that debate is a wonderful thing. And debate has its values. It certainly does. People could share ideas and it is healthy for a functioning democracy. But I also believe that sometimes you're just not going to get the other person to see your way of thinking and they're not going to get you to see their way of thinking. Because the differences in view are so deeply entrenched that it's it's just not going to happen that way. And that's not necessarily a bad thing. It, it just demonstrates the diversity of human thinking. So, you know, the thing is, there's a lot of contentious issues get, that get people really wound up. And people lose their temper and sometimes they get into heated debates. But I... I think that it's important that people are comfortable in themselves. Now, with me being a centrist, it's not... One thing I'd like to make clear is centrism is not about sitting on the fence. Centrists, moderates, can also have strong views on things. Now, the thing about me is I have made opinions in the past, especially on cyberspace. You know, I'm talking about just comments on particular videos people would then automatically jump to the conclusion that because of what I've said, I must be a right winger or I must be a left winger. The thing is, I'm a social person. I like getting on with people. I don't actually like arguing with people, but I also want to exercise the scope for having my view. And sometimes I do see views which I think are, you know, morally wrong and I, I want to challenge them just like people want to challenge me. So, you know, I'd be lying if I said that my interaction on cyberspace is exactly like the real world. It's just not. I'm not saying I never get into debates in the real world, I do. But 
there is a different scope, and I don't think anyone can honestly deny that. Um, you know, most people don't particularly like confrontation, but I think it is more seen as normal or more advocated in country in democratic countries. Anyway, um, like I say, you know, I. I find myself being pigeonholed as right wing and being pigeonholed as left wing. Now the truth is, there are some of my views that probably could be considered right wing, conservative sort of thinking, especially on the issues of crime, and maybe some certain progressive notions. For example, my views on issues around political correctness and some issues to do with, for example, transgender people. My my feeling is that being transgender borders on mental illness but that's not an insult that's just my honest opinion but lefties would say oh you're a right-wing asshole you hate them and so on and so on um but then i'd have left-wing views as well a lot of my views on economic issues would probably be gearing more towards the left i staunchly believe in workers rights and i don't mean in a red flag socialist sort of way just as a basic human right um, I, I believe in the principle of universal health care. Um, I believe in the minimum wage, all those sort of things, which certainly by American standards would be seen as a lot more left wing. I also passionately believe in gun regulation. Now, I don't actually believe that is a left right issue because I believe there are American Republicans who also support gun regulation. But um, anyway, those are just a few examples. Um, so when I look at all my opinions, I find that if I align myself with a right-wing group, I'd soon find myself being feeling polarised or left out because I'd find that their views are all right-wing. It's like universally right-wing. So I would find that some of my left-wing thinking polarises me. If I joined a left-wing group, I'd find that some of my more right-wing thinking polarises me within that group. So I am very, very comfortable calling myself a centrist. Centrism to me, I wouldn't say it's about compromise, because like I say, you can have strong views, but it is about realising the world is not black and white, and a lot of issues are complex, and there are compelling arguments on both sides. Um, another thing, I am very critical of feminism, now people would consider that a traditionally right-wing view, but I'm passionately for women's rights. So, you know, there's a lot of ways that people could be pigeonholed and i'll be honest i have probably been guilty of pigeonholing other people as well you know i probably labeled people um i'm not going to pretend i haven't i probably have and probably sometimes i shouldn't have done that so I, i'm candid and honest enough to admit that i haven't always been as diplomatic as i should have been um sometimes i've you know wrote a comment based on my emotions rather than sort of um, writing something that would be more diplomatic. And I, I regret that to an extent because you can't really undo it. You know, I could go back and delete the comment, but I think that would be a little bit, you know, not only dishonest, but maybe slightly cardly on my part. And anyway, it wouldn't be practical. I've written over the years thousands and thousands of comments. So all I want to say with this video is... Um, I, I find that there are right-wingers I like, and I find there are left-wingers that I like. Um, it's, it's very difficult to explain because I find I get pissed off with both sides in roughly equal measure. One day I might find, oh, I'm really critical of that sort of right-wing thinking, and it's really pissing me off for, for whatever reason. But then sometimes in the same day, some I'll hear about some ridiculous left-wing statement or idea or whatever and i find it pisses me off but to be clear i i respect that everyone has a right to their view so you know i'm not kind of being holier than i or saying that my views are superior to anyone else's I'm not saying that for a second but i'm just sort of saying out the point that being a centrist can sometimes be a lonely position to be in because you find that you know, sometimes I actually envy lefties and right-wingers because I find that they are more, they kind of have their little tribal groupings and they can, you know, go and have their convention or their meeting or their gathering, whatever. With centrists, it's a bit harder because 
for a start, centrism is not really a political movement. It's a vague notion, which is a pity because I, I'm very clear with what it means. But um, and the th another thing is even among centrists, so you know, centrism itself isn't it's diverse because I would find that I the my centrism. You know, like I said, I endorse certain left wing views, certain right wing views. And yet there would be other centrists who maybe would have strong disagreements with, I don't know, my views on crime or my views on, you know, I may find, for example, there is another person who identifies himself as a centrist. They are very much opposed to gun regulation. However, they might agree with me on something like immigration, just as an example. You know, I'm just giving examples here. None of these are meant to be, I'm not using these as a big debate focus. Um, or I might find that there is a moderate feminist who agrees with my views on crime. You know, so centrism itself is diverse. But for me, it, it still beats tying yourself to... What I find really obnoxious is when people try to tell others how they should think and how they should identify themselves. I have never, ever, ever told someone how they should identify themselves. I've I've gotten to arguments with people, but I've never said you have to identify yourself this way. So I resent this notion that, oh, you must be a socialist if you believe in a certain thing, or you must be a conservative if you believe in a certain thing. That's narrow thinking. So just because I believe in a minimum wage doesn't mean I'm going to endorse a socialist candidate. And just because I believe in being tough on crime doesn't mean I'm automatically going to endorse a conservative candidate because there's more to it than one policy issue. Although certain policy issues mean a lot to me. Anyway, there is another point to all of this, and it's something I haven't said in previous videos, and this is actually quite an important thing. I don't think that political views should divide people. I have friends who are supporters of the Chinese Communist Party. Now, I hate communism. Does that mean that I'm going to break away from those friendships? You know, I'll admit there was times I thought about it, but then I think, well, wait a second, I'm I'm thinking of these people as individual people, not because of their politics. Um, likewise, I find American conservatives that I'm in full agreement with, and I actually quite like them as people. I'll give an example with this, and it might be a strange example, but... I find when I hear George W. Bush in interviews, speaking and so on, I find he's actually quite likable. Leave aside all the politics and his policy record or the rest of it, I'm talking purely, purely as a man, as a person. Now, people will say his politics are a part of his personality, and I understand that with a politician it is. But I find, you know, as someone who opposed the Iraq, Iraq war, and passionately opposed it, and would disagree with Bush on many, pretty much every area. You know, I find that when I listen to him, he comes across as quite likable. He comes across as a guy you can have a beer with. Um, and yet his politics, I'd have probably little time for. So, and likewise, you know, I'm sure there would be some on the right who, if they're being completely honest, they would find Barack Obama quite a likable person purely in personality terms. In fact, in the film W, the Oliver Stone film, there's a bit that shows Laura Bush meeting uh, George for the first time, and she said she'd been registered as a Democrat. And she said, now I don't know if this is based on real dialogue or if it was just for the film, but she said, I don't think someone's politics should divide them. And I thought that was a nice scene. I mean, the thing is, if you go through life polar, I, like only choosing friends who have your exact political persuasion I think it's going to narrow things down a bit. I have friends, and I'm actually quite proud of this, from all political persuasions. I have lefty friends. I have right-wing friends. I've got friends from all political persuasions. And, you know, I may have disagreements with them, but to be honest, I just don't get into politics half the time, most of the time. So I don't think that politics should necessarily divide people. Obviously, politics matters. Politics impacts people's lives. I fully understand that. And I also understand that someone can have such strong views that they could simply never align themselves with a certain type of person 
of a certain type of thinking. I understand that. But I I would like to think I'm open minded enough not to only choose friends who have my exact political thinking. Because it would be very isolationist and it would be very narrow things down a lot. So what I'm trying to say here is that there is political ideology and then there is personality. And I would find it a great pity if someone who I otherwise got on well with, or say, just as a sake of argument, one of my friends, and I'm not saying they would do this because I trust my friends, but just as a scenario, if you had a friend and you'd spent years knowing that person, you got on well with them, then they saw that you had a particular political viewpoint that they didn't agree with, and suddenly they discard you. It's like, oh, I don't want anything to do with you because I strongly disagree with that point. I think that would be very sad. Um. You know, I used to kind of gear myself towards trying to only be friends with people that I really agreed with. The thing is, you don't have to talk about politics to friends. It's not necessary. I believe it's perfectly possible to have, and actually there's many examples of this, uh, both in the US and in the UK. In the UK, there are many examples of families being divided on politics, but it doesn't mean that there are any this. You know, I'll give an example. Um, We had a very, very left-wing Labour MP, he's now passed away, Tony Benn. In the British left, he is seen as an icon. You know, he's a hugely respected figure. Now, his son, Hilary Benn, also a senior politician, in fact, higher ranking than his father because he's been in cabinet positions and, you know, he's been shadow foreign secretary and so on. He is much more to the political right than his father. Um, another example might be Rand Paul and Ron Paul wouldn't exactly see eye to eye, although they're probably more both towards the libertarian school of thinking. But I'd say Rand would be probably more right wing than his father. But my point is, that's a good example. It doesn't mean that people are going to disown their son or their daughter because they have different politics. Yet another example, Dick Cheney's daughter, as I understand it, was a lesbian. Dick Cheney has some pretty conservative views on homosexuality. So does that mean that he's suddenly not going to love his daughter? I don't think so. Anyway, it's a private matter. I'm just using it as an example that in families and in relationships and friendships, people can have different political viewpoints without having animosity towards the person. Now, I accept that sometimes politics do influence the way someone comes across as a person but the truth is there's assholes on the right and there's assholes on the left it's about how you could go and conduct your business now i have no sympathy with anyone who thinks that they're going to win an argument by surrounding someone in a mob and shouting them down i came across a video yesterday and it was about the gay marriage debate in california eight years ago now i'm actually quite pro-gay rights but i find myself getting quite irritated with the way the people in the video were going about it there was a christian woman she had a cross and she opposed gay marriage but these gay activists surrounded her and started shouting her down and even started hitting her at one point with their placards now the fact is you just don't win arguments that way because it is just an argument mob mentality might is right and i have no respect for the might is right argument like shouting someone down wins an argument and both the left and the right are guilty of it. I would say in the UK, the left is more guilty of it because there's been more examples on the left of left-wing people, hard leftists, trying to physically intimidate their opponents. That has been more common than people who are pro-conservative. You know, They can be quite arrogant and snobby at times, but they're Generally speaking, you don't see UKIP supporters surrounding left-wingers and shouting in their face, generally speaking. Anyway, I've spoken at length in this video, um, but there was a lot of things I want to cover. If anyone wants to challenge any of my viewpoints, that is not the purpose of this video. I'm, I'm just talking about the general principle of centrism. You know, people could have strong differences of view of my, of opinion, uh, with my views. And, and the thing is, I know I have some subscribers and I know I have different views with them. But I, I respect those people because they continue to watch my videos and they don't just throw out mindless insults. And they were very respectful of me. Um, 
And, you know, those people know who they are. And I want to thank those people because we may have different viewpoints, but you've always been very respectful and tolerant of me. And I want to thank you for that. Um, because, you know, I may well be saying things that people strongly disagree with. And the truth is there has been times in the past when I've been less diplomatic than I could have been. I'm going to try to be a little bit more diplomatic. I'm not going to stop having passionate views on things. There are some things that I believe are simply morally indefensible. But there you have it. Um, so, yeah, I, I'm happy with that. Only one problem at the moment is in the UK, for example, centrists have largely been pushed to the side, politically speaking, because we now have a pretty conservative government matched with some pretty hard left opposition in Labour under Jeremy Corbyn and the Greens and the SNP and so on. Um, the SNP is probably more centre left, but they're a Nationals party, which I have no time for. Um, one final point. Centrism is not about this wishy-washy, oh, let's all get on and let's sing Kumbaya in a nice circle. It's not about that. Centrists can have strong views and disagreements with people. But all I'm saying is centrism is about not tying your mask to either left or right. I have left-wing views. I have right-wing views. And I always try to be a decent human being. I try to be civil to the people in my life I'm talking about. I try to be civil to them. I try to be a decent human being and try to be honest. And I have been in real world situations where I've got into awkward debates and I don't particularly enjoy it. I've kind of said, well, look, we're not going to agree. Let's leave it at that. And by the way, a quick tip, never, ever, ever mix politics and alcohol. It's a bad idea. I've done that before and it's, believe me, it's not a good experience. Okay, I'll leave it there. Thank you for watching.